We are just two days away from an extremely tight U.S. presidential election. Obviously, Ottawa preparing for either candidate to win, including, of course, the possibility of Donald Trump's promise of a 10 percent tariff that is raising alarms for some. I'm joined now this morning by Canada's Minister for International Trade and Economic Development, Mary Ang. Thanks for joining me this morning, Minister. Good morning, Rosie. Always good to be with you on a Sunday morning over a yeah. cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I hope you've had some coffee. I sure have, because you've got a busy week ahead in terms of what might happen. Obviously, Canada and the U.S. have this massive trade relationship, $3.6 billion in goods and services every day. What does a change in administration potentially mean for that relationship, Minister? Well, I would start by saying um, where you started, which is this is an enormously big trading relationship between Canada and the United States. It's over a trillion dollars and it is uh, $3 billion a day. Millions of Canadian and American jobs depend on it. And uh, and we have a excellent trade agreement in the USMCA, which is what they call it in the US, and Kuzma here in Canada, that really underpin and create the opportunities for us to be doing this trade together. But we are strategic partners. We are dependable partners. Uh, between Canada and the United States, and that will for sure continue. Kusma, as as you know, well, uh, is up for review in 2026. There are two sections that are being reviewed right now. Do you have the sense from what you've heard from the two presidential candidates that they are remain committed to, to that deal and to the ongoing portion of that deal, not just the review? Yes, I mean, let's um, I want to remind Canadians that it was uh, this government under the leadership of Prime Minister Trudeau and the former president in President Trump that negotiated, renegotiated what is now Kuzma USMCA. It is a good deal that rec- that received bipartisan support across uh, the American Congress. And it has provisions in there that strengthen this trading relationship to make us really strong North American partners so that we can be more competitive, we can grow together. But it also has provision there that is really good for small and medium sized businesses, as well as for women entrepreneurs have standards in there that deal with the environment as well as uh, the prohibition of forced labor in our supply chain. So a very comprehensive agreement. And yes, we are going to go through a review because I think it's healthy to uh, to uh, as trading partners to take a look at what is working and how we can make it even better. And uh, and that is the work that we are looking forward to doing. Does it concern you that Kamala Harris was one of 10 senators to vote against that deal in 2020? I think that uh, the work we have been doing as Team Canada, where uh, I and certainly Minister Champagne has crisscrossed America. We uh, visited over 33 states, uh, some 850 uh, interactions with business labor groups uh, working with each other between Canada and the United States. This is the one thing that they tell the one thing that they conclude and tell us is how important the Canada US relationship is and how important it is to jobs, how important it is to investments, how important it is to workers. And um, and that is what we are hearing uh, categorically all around uh, all around our visits uh, to um, to legislators at all levels, from local mayors to state legislators to governors and to senators, and of course also in Washington D.C. Yeah, I mean, for sure, having more people to talk to is a good thing. But specifically about Vice President Harris, do you think that she now gets the importance of that trade agreement? Well, I would say that uh, this agreement is one where the proof is in the numbers, but it's also in the strategic partnerships that have been created um, in through this agreement. Everyone in Canada and America understand the importance of, let's just take one important sector like automobiles, which we've been making for over 100 years together. And this deeply integrated supply chain, now as we turn to uh, electric vehicles, is also creating deep strategic partnerships in areas like critical minerals, where Canada and the US are investing together so that Canada can become and is that reliable uh, source supplier for the United States, not just for EVs, but for all kinds of technologies and all kinds of things that we're going to need in the economies of the future. And um, and when you look at the um, the industries that are being propelled, that are green industries, uh, something very very important to uh, the vice president's um, uh, heart, but also um, you know her commitment to, is another area that sees uh, that sees collaboration and partnership strengthen uh, partnership between Canada and the U.S. 
Yeah, and you're, and you're right to mention that because some of her concerns around uh, some, uh, seem to be around uh, climate change and, and green technology. Uh, I, I want to talk about the other candidate, Donald Trump, because he has said he will impose 10 percent or more tariffs on imports from other countries. That would include Canada. Uh, the, this, the trade deal does not it, you know, prevent him from doing that. The Business Development Bank of Canada says that that would result in a loss of $7 billion of Canadian GDP in the first year. How are you preparing for the possibility of tariffs, Minister? What I would say is um, uh, we've been here before. Um, Canada has uh, negotiated this agreement with uh, the former president. We have stood firm with Canadian businesses and workers in the past. We will continue to do that. Canadians might remember that we were levied 232 tariffs on steel and aluminum that we effectively got removed. So our defense of Canada and Canadian businesses is not going to be any different now. But what I would say, though, is that in these important exchanges that we've had with American businesses and American labor, what they say to us is that they don't like the tariffs. Why? Because it adds costs. So I think that um, that any incoming president uh, cares deeply about their businesses, their jobs in America, and its impact. And we will continue to work with American businesses and Canadians alike and our labor groups and a range of stakeholders to make sure that this important North American bilateral relationship continues to grow and deepen because uh, the work that we have done over the last many months says one thing to me, that this relationship is not only an important one, but it's one that we need to uh, continue to cultivate and one to even deepen even further uh, as we are looking at uh, two de- you know, democratic um, countries that have, val- that have shared values. And certainly this deep integration is something that we have been working on and will continue to work on. Well, well, that leads me to my to my last question. Democratic countries, certainly, but um, also a presidential candidate who has not accepted the outcome of the past election and may not accept it this time is already laying the groundwork for suggestions that voting is not uh, is potentially fraudulent, even though there's no evidence of that right now. How will Canada respond if Donald Trump does not accept the outcome of the election, Minister? Well, the American people are going to um, make their choice in this election. The American democratic system will need to uh, do its work. Canada, what I want to say to the Canadian people is that Canada stands ready to work with whoever the American people choose uh, to work in the White House. I would remind Canadians that the last time, I think it took a number of days before um, sure before did, yeah. we... But I would also say that there was uh, another election where it took some 40 days uh, for the Americans to confirm their president. So we stand ready, ready to work. We are ready. And we have done a lot of work over the past number of months. And we have a track record of working with the Americans. And this trading relationship is not only important to Canada, but I have heard it over and over and over again that it is really important to the Americans as well. Minister Ang, great of you to make the time this morning. It's a busy week for uh, both of us ahead. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Rosie. Earlier, I spoke with the U.S. Ambassador to Canada, David Cohen. Ambassador Cohen, nice to see you. Thanks for making the time. Rosemary, it is good to see you, and thanks for having me on your air. So this race, I, I, I think we would both agree on this, remains too close to call. I, I wonder how surprised you are that it is still this close and, and what Canadians should be watching for come Tuesday. So um, first of all, I'm not surprised at all. The United States is a, at this point, the two political parties in the United States are, um, it's a very close country. It's a 50-50 country. Um, the last several elections have been incredibly close. And I think the political dynamic in the United States is such that um, our national presidential elections um, are likely to be close for some time to come. Um, in terms of what Canadians can expect, I, I want to I take this opportunity, if I can, to to sort of describe a bit of a fundamental difference between United States elections and Canadian elections. Um, Just the way you open this broadcast, the race is still too close to call. That's true. But let's remember that on election day, on Tuesday, there will be hundreds of elections taking place in the United States. 
um, it's more than a presidential election. And those elections all have consequence. They have consequence for the governance of our country. They have consequence for the relationship between the United States and Canada. So just at the federal level alone, there will be 34 United States Senate races. There will be 435 races in the U.S. House of Representatives. There are also 13 governors being elected in the United States um, come Tuesday. There are countless mayors, state legislatures, city councils, um, and other elected officials yeah. being elected throughout the country. Um, and it is that more diffused nature of the political process in the United States that has helped to provide the durability and the sustainability of America's democracy for almost 250 years. I do want to ask you about trade, uh, if I can, because Kumsa, as you know, is up for renewal of uh, to decide whether people are going ahead and there have to be negotiations in 2026. Um, and there are different positions from, from each candidate, for sure. Donald Trump uh, was the one that renegotiated this, but is now interested in tariffs. Kamala Harris was not actually for the, that trade deal. How, how does Canada then sort of put itself in, a, a, in the right frame of mind uh, after Tuesday to deal with what is such a major issue for both countries? You know, I'm reminded by one of my favorite headline statistics, which is the United States and Canada have more than 3.4 billion Canadian dollars a day in goods and services trade that crosses our border. Most of that, the overwhelming majority of that is free trade. Um, and that has created um, a momentum, a trade momentum um, that is enormous and significant. Um, and frankly, it is a trade relationship that is the envy of the world, literally the envy of the world. And I haven't heard anything from either candidate who has any interest in blowing up the world's largest bilateral trade relationship mm -hmm. as a result of this election. You're right that Donald Trump has talked about tariffs, but tariffs are not necessarily, and in fact are not violative of COSMA. Tariffs can take place under, under COSMA. Um, and it's a, that's a trade policy approach um, that may be different than the, well, it's different than the trade policy approach than the Biden-Harris administration has had. Um, but it doesn't mean that it is a blowing up of the trade relationship. It doesn't mean that it's throwing Cosma out the window and getting rid of it. Um, so with the review process and the discussions that take place under the review process be different, under a Trump administration as compared to a Harris administration, I think the answer to that is a definitive maybe. <laughs> um, because I don't know, I honestly don't know what the what a President Harris would want to discuss in the review process. I don't know precisely what a President Trump would want to discuss in the review process. I, I'm sure that will be reassuring for, for many businesses that, that are, are worried about what might happen. I, I do want to ask you about, Ambassador, sort of the state of um, democracy the day after or the state of peaceful transfer of power. Obviously, that is also the concern in this country, how things will unfold going forward, um, regardless of who wins. What is the best sort of approach for Canada as it watches Tuesday night, Wednesday night, however long this is going to take, and, and hopes that that stability will uh, remain, given that we've seen in the past there has been problems around it? So, um, well, the, I, the best approach for Canada is to be patient, um, and Canada is a big, it's a big institution, if you will, but for Canadians, um, is to be patient, to not necessarily pay a lot of attention to some of the um, some of the press soundbite commentary um, uh, around the results of the election. Um, I 
Look, I'm extremely, I'm extremely proud of my country, the United States. I'm extremely, I'm extremely committed personally to the importance of democracy and democratic values. I'm enormously proud of the fact that the United States stands, I believe, as the world's most enduring democracy for almost 250 years now. We have had this democracy. We have had a democracy that has survived and thrived in the face of many challenges to that democracy. This, by the way, I mean, I represent President Biden and the Biden-Harris administration in Canada today and will until January 20th of 2025. Uh, but that's not, this isn't just, it is not just the view of President Biden and of the Biden-Harris administration that democracy is important, but it is something that needs to be defended and protected on an ongoing basis. Um, former Senator McCain used to talk about this all the time. Uh -huh. um, Senator McConnell talks about this in the same way. Um, and so democracy is something that's important. It's valuable. It's something I treasure as an American. Um, but I think democracy is easily going to survive the outcome of this election. I can point back over the last century, go longer than that if you want, and <laughs> challenges democracy. But there's a common denominator to every single one of those challenges, which is at the end of the day, the United States survived, democracy in the United States survived, and I'd go further than that, the United States and democracy were stronger after weathering those challenges than they were beforehand. And I firmly believe that regardless of the outcome of the election, that the United States is going to remain the most durable democracy in the world. We're gonna remain the most influential democracy in the world and democracy itself will survive and will continue to be stronger than it was before this election. Ambassador Cohen, that's an impassioned plea for democracy, but I heard loud and, loud and clear. Thank you for your time, sir. I appreciate it. Rosemary, thank you for having me on. It is always good to talk with you.